find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the poor. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 79. Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter from the Mayhem Studios, live in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, with me on the line, as usual, is Eamon Payton. He's the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. I love since we started calling you that these last few weeks lately. <laughs> it's, a nice, it's a nice, more catchier title, because it's easier for you, I know, because it's like... You, I know you kind of flip between like, well, my play-by-play or color. I know it's a confusing thing. Is he announced well, just simply voice works. Usually the guy, yeah, the voice, the voice of. He's the guy down there talking about the thing and and, and the stuff and everything. Uh, and of course, me up here, I'm doing a bit of video work with uh, IWC RWA, some video production, and including something involving Virgil next week. Maybe we'll discuss that here uh, coming up on the show. Uh, but uh, of course, we got a great. Great guest coming back. We had him back on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. J-Rock we're going to be talking to in a minute. Uh, but in the meantime, please go check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. It's the first time uh, maybe if you've come across this show. we got so many more shows going on, talking about all aspects of pro wrestling and all the shows going on these days. Of course, it's dedicated to independent pro wrestling out there uh, these days as well. Uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and, and all kinds of places I can't even think of right now. And please, you can also drop us a line your thoughts people we need to talk to questions if we're uh, announcing in advance who's who's coming on the show at uh, 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline and good times at wrestlingmamshow.com is the email address please also check out our friend basic sickness at basicsickness.com if you dig the music at the beginning and end of this show uh, he does a lot of cool stuff and actually has a new album in the works i'm really looking forward to see uh what comes out from that so let's get with it uh uh, this is a guy, again, we've had him on Wrestling Mayhem Show a long time. He's one of the guys, you know, we, we, you know thinking back when I started uh, uh, checking out local independent wrestling, he was a part of the Cleveland Mafia with some some guy named Ray Rowe. But uh, give it up one time for the man, uh, according to his Twitter, the king of Cleveland, J-Rock. How you doing tonight, sir? What's up, fellas? How's it going, baby? How's it going? It's going good. It's Fantastic. going good. It's been a while, man. Hey, it's been a while since I've been doing the thing, you know. I've kind of been persona non grata for most of, uh, let's see, 2011 through mm-hmm. 2015. It's only been, you know, 12, 15 months, but I've been back at this now. So good to see but you. I'm back. Good to see uh, you out you there. Right. I want to talk a little bit about that, maybe a little bit about that, uh, your days with Ray Rail a little bit as well, uh, and, uh, and so much more. But first, yeah. we, we like to kind of like, kind of a little get to know you question here uh, because, you know, independent wrestling not everybody knows everybody on these shows uh but but you know what is the first thing that kind of got you into wrestling like what was maybe the thing you saw on tv in person that says i'm, I'm kind of hooked on this thing man um i don't know about any one thing in particular just wrestling in general man when i was probably i don't know five six years old whatever whatever the age is that you can remember things Mm-hmm. That's the age I remember my dad sitting me down in the living room and showing me pro wrestling for the first time. And uh, that was it, man. I mean, I was done for. And uh, it's been it's been crazy ever since, man. I was the kid in school that got in trouble for doodling wrestling stuff in my notebooks when I should have been paid. Even though, I mean, I was a, I was a straight A student. So, like, my problem was. I had too much time on my hands and I spent that time thinking about wrestling and people used to always tell me that wrestling stuff's never going to get you anywhere, but I'll be damned if I didn't make a life out of it at the end of the end of the whole thing. That's awesome. That's awesome. So so what brought you, what what bridged that? Was it just that kind of, uh, I don't want to call it an obsession in a negative term uh, of pro wrestling, a healthy obsession in the long run, it turns out. Uh, What, what bridged that from like being into it to getting into the ring? Oh no, no! You mean oh, at the very beginning? You don't mean like coming back? You mean at the no, very no? I mean, beginning. At the, yeah. What 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 brought you from being a watcher of wrestling to be a participant? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, well, let's see. Um, crazy little story out of that. It's funny how life can take you one direction or life can take you another. I watched wrestling, you know, my whole life, and I went through like everybody. I went through that period. Although, I think most of us that become wrestlers don't really have that period where you stop watching wrestling. But I did have that time maybe from like 
14 to 16, 13, 14, 15 in that area. And then I found wrestling again. You know, every kid I think goes through that for a minute, but uh, right. most of us don't go through, you know, the ones that don't go away and never come back. And then the rest of us become wrestlers. But <laughs> I think I was about oh, 17, 18, and I got a job working for a security company. And part of the thing was you got a membership at this health club called Black's Health World here in Cleveland. And mm-hmm. anybody that's old school Cleveland wrestling would know about Black's Health World. It was the place that JT Lightning, it was a ticket outlet for Cleveland All Pro Wrestling. So I went in there one day and there was a, a sign on the wall, a poster on the wall for wrestling right across the street at the Variety Theater in Cleveland, Ohio, which it's just an abandoned building now. But uh, it was it was the greatest place in the world to me when I saw it the first time because it was JT had this busted up little theater and turned it into like a, a little arena. It was anyways, it, it, you know, nostalgia makes things better than it was. But, but anyways, I couldn't believe that was the first time that I knew that wrestling existed other than WWF or NWA, whatever you saw on TV. I did not know that local pro wrestling existed. I could not believe that this was a thing and it was going to be, right across the street. So I wrote down the phone number, called it. And of course, later I know that it was JT Lightning, but this guy answers the phone. I'm thinking I'm calling the office. I had no clue that JT was like, <laughs> he just got home from delivering the bread truck and he was just, you know, running errands and answered the phone. And, you know, I'm thinking I called the office of Cleveland All Pro Wrestling and said, hey, how do you become a wrestler? I want to do it, you know, because I was, you know, all of, five foot, whatever, and 300 pounds, you know, the world was just knocking on my door to come be a pro wrestler, man. But anyways, I called this guy and, uh, sure enough, he says, come on down. We've got a show this weekend at the uh, West park party center. One of the places that JT always used to run his big shows. And, uh, he said, come on down. I do tryouts before the show. I can't remember how much it was. It was like 50 or a hundred bucks. And if you stay and sign up for training, it goes off your tuition. And if you don't, you don't get your money back, kid. And I don't take checks. So bring cash and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I had no clue what to do. I said, okay, I'll be there. And, uh, man, I, I didn't know what to do. So I went out there and got me some leather gloves and I got me a vest and I got me a, a little Kango hat. And I showed up like, like you would walk in the door. If you thought pro wrestling, you didn't know what this was. You're like, man, I don't know. Do I show up ready to fight or what, man? So, so I showed up and I didn't know I'm 18 years old, man. What the hell do I know? And uh, <laughs> I got pushed around and bumped around a little bit. And, and that was a real simple little tryout. Take some buckles, take some bumps and, and give me your money. And, and if you, you know, JT, if you want to do it, come back down to the gym later, et cetera, and so forth. So I stayed and watched the show. Had no clue that this stuff existed, man. This is indie wrestling. And I'm like, get out of here, man. And, and, and then I saw a craziness. It was a Ox Harley and Madman Tondo, just it was stairway to hell or something. They was fighting ladders and barbed wire and thumbtacks, stuff I had never seen in my life. I said, these people are crazy, man. But <laughs> anyways, JT gives me this 20 page. I bet I could find it somewhere if I looked hard <laughs> enough, man. 20 page contract. He used to give it to everybody and it was a whole bunch of blanks and you signed it at the end. And it was basically, you gave JT lightning permission and he, he he ended up stopped using it because eventually guys called his bluff and he couldn't, it didn't hold up, but Mm -hmm. it basically said, I own you. You wrestle for me for no, it was zero. It was no dollar amount. It was as many times (laughs) as he wants. And you can't, you couldn't take bookings outside of more than less than 300 miles away from Cleveland, which is, the whole state of Ohio and beyond basically, you know, without JT's permission and all kinds of stuff anyways. But I thought this was a contract to be a pro wrestler, man. So I I, I couldn't afford it because he was, he was one like whatever, same price they want now, 1500, whatever it is, you know, wrestling, wrestling schools don't go through inflation like everything else. But, uh, and uh, so I held onto this thing for, I don't know, a year or something like that. Cause I was just 18, 19, I think when I started with him. So anyways, one day, about a year later, somebody else comes across and said, hey, you still thinking about doing that wrestling? I said, yeah. And he goes, hey, I got this guy named Gary. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but there's this kid in Cleveland named Gmo. And back when I broke in, which was uh, late 98, early, uh, early 99, there was only two people in Cleveland that did wrestling. It was JT Lightning and Gmo. And if you were a wrestler, you worked for JT Lightning, and the garbage wrestlers worked for Gmo. I mean, it was no, no, that was the just 
distinction. So anyways, but I didn't know that at the time. So I called this cat named Gary. Now JT just told me he wanted like $1,500 and he needed 300 of it up front and it was going to be a lot of work and I may never get a wrestling. Who knows, man? It depends if I'm any good. So this cat Gary comes along and says, no, nah, man, I ain't like that JT Lightning. Listen, you give me 50 bucks. We take a van out to this guy's ring once a month. We roll around for a couple of hours. I'm willing to bet I can have you your first match in a month or so. And I, I tell you what, kid, I even put the TV title on you right off the bat if you could sell some tickets. But, <laughs> you know, we ain't like JT Lightning. We don't make you do all this training and learn all this stuff you don't need to know. We'll get you in there. And we'll get you in there having matches right away. That, that sounds like and a great I'm like, idea. He goes to, you know, so he's like, you know, you could pay fifteen hundred dollars, or you could pay us fifty, maybe a hundred bucks, and you've got it, man. And you're off. Once you're wrestling, you're off and running. Now I'm not gonna lie. I'm sitting here and I'm going, man. I'm eighteen, about to be nineteen. I'm going, man. Okay, this guy wants a lot of money and a hard work. This guy's like, dude, give me fifty bucks, man. I'll slap you in the ring and blah blah blah. And I, I can't lie. Luckily. Fate took me the right way because I ended up going with JT Lightning because I'll tell you, we wouldn't be talking right now had no. I gone the other way for sure. And uh, uh, because of some of the people that I trained, wrestling history may be different because uh, you know, I'm just saying, man, GMO was not nothing to mess with. But anyways, um, <laughs> and then I still didn't call JT right away. My brother and I were sitting there watching public access, uh, JT's little TV show one day on TV. And he goes, man, I'm sick of hearing you talk. And he's my younger brother. He's like mm. four years younger than me. He goes, I'm sick of hearing you talk about you're going to do this wrestling. He goes, I, I bet you won't do it. I said, I'll do it. I said, I just don't have the money. He said, bro, if you'd call, I'll pay for your first month's training. I dare you to do it. I said, dude, give me the phone. So I picked up the phone and gave a call. And JT Lightning answered the phone. I said, hey, are you still doing training? He goes, you're in luck, kid. I've got a bunch of open spots, right? It just so worked out that way that he had a bunch of open spots and he was even cutting a deal. I could get in right off the bat for 75 bucks and then pay him whatever, 50 bucks a month for the rest of my life or whatever it was. So um, I said, I'm there. And boom, two days later, my brother gave me the money. I went up there. I said, okay, I'm going. Give me the dough. He said, here you go. And, uh, and there you go. And then my brother bet me my second month's tuition that I would never have an actual wrestling match. So my brother actually paid for my first two months of wrestling tuition because I got in the ring about six weeks later and had my first match, but that was it, man. And then, man, then it was off and running from there, but it was a crazy ride. And there was no internet back then. There was no nothing, man. Like I said, I didn't even know indie wrestling existed until that time. And, and that's Cleveland All Pro. That's um, a, a very. Uh, it comes up in conversation all the time. I mean, I've, I've worked up there with with Prime Wrestling and, and seen it, some AIW, and you know we talk with so many people that that, that do those shows up there. Um, but but th- that was like kind of the Fed up there for for a long long time, right? That's all there was. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's all there was in Cleveland, and then CWA was the other one, and that was just the guys that didn't know how to wrestle. I mean, seriously, right, that right. was your. Your GMOs, your Spanish Flies, your Psycho Mikes, and all those guys. <laughs> Nick C. Sack, you know, some of the best names in indie wrestling, man. You know, a who's who of <laughs> trash bag wrestlers. <laughs> and unfortunately, <laughs> I mean, that's definitely something that, that comes up uh, a, a lot these days, too. So, so, <laughs> so, so from well, there. I'm just saying, if you ever want to see a definition of trash bag wrestling, look up the Spanish Fly, Angel Spanish Torres, fly. man. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> drops names on you brother go look up some lixie sack best of you know <laughs> awesome awesome all right well so so now now i'm mostly familiar of course with your time down here in in, in pittsburgh as the cleveland mafia with ray row um yeah. Yeah, which was you know a, a tremendous time i know you guys you know came down with the browns gimmick or the browns colors gimmick at least and uh you know really kind of ran down pittsburgh but but still kind of gained the respect uh, you know, great four-way matches. I wish that there was there was talent to do that again these days. Uh, I think at the time it was like uh, 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 sexual harassment and uh, uh, I don't know some combination of Gory and Shima and and and, and the Gambinos, right? Uh, how did you get, how did you find yourself in Pittsburgh in in uh, in IWC at the time? Man, um, okay, there's another good story. And I, as a matter of fact, I've told this a few times recently to young guys that I'm just kind of telling stories about. Uh, catching breaks and how you got to do whatever, you know, there's certain, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And, and I'll tell you how I got into IWC at the time. And listen, you guys know Mm -hmm. that IWC and I, and listen, I don't know everything. I mean, I talked to, to, uh, 
uh, plumber, and and I hope to you guys will see me up there sooner rather than later. But but besides all of that, I'm not most familiar of everything that's happened there in the last four or five years. But I do know that it's it's a little different than it was at its peak. Certainly. Not that that's anything bad. I mean, nothing stays there forever. The DVD right. market, for everything's different than it was when Norm was running it. It's not just to say one person did something better than the other, but it's, it's, it's just working through a rebuilding phase. You know, two different people have owned it, and it's got a different uh, uh, attack, and that's cool because you've got to go your own way with stuff. But you guys know that at the time, especially, let's see, I started in 2004 at the Big Butler Fair, and I started trying to get in months before that. Think of how hard it was to get in. I remember when I started working for IWC, me, Cameron, Tracy, just so many guys, like mm-hmm. M-Dog, Josh, we would hammer Norm to use Ray Rowe. It took like a year to get Ray Rowe in the door. We could never get Norm to book Mike Hodder, who's now the world champion, EC3. I mean, he just... It wasn't there. It took months for them to get McChesney in the door. It took months for me to get in the door. Like, it was hard for guys to get in because spots were limited. And, you know, I mean, think about it. The active roster was Punk and Cabana and all those guys coming in every month. Plus, you had all the regulars, you mm-hmm. know. And so, uh, so anyways, uh, how I got in, and I tell guys this story. I just told it to somebody over the weekend. I said, man, you know how I got into IWC? I said, I sent tapes up and I sent messages to Norm and I never heard anything back. And I was, I was mad about it, man. I'm like, come on, who is this guy not to email me back? Like, just tell me, you know, Hey, I, I, whatever, you know, just answer me back. Don't blow me off. And Tracy, Tracy Smothers at the time, almost every road trip would fly into Cleveland and we would do loops together wherever. I mean, Tracy and I were, we just went everywhere together for years. And so he started working again for Norm. So he came and flew into Cleveland and, stayed with me and he said come on we'll drive up to the show so we went up there somebody else was with us and i can't remember who but on the way up he said look i know you don't like norm connors and hey i I mean i'll tell you at the time i never thought norm connors and i would end up having the relationship we did because it ended up being very good and i think that he's very much one of the best promoters that i've ever worked for man but uh at the time you wouldn't have known it was coming there because we were kind of on opposite sides of things, man. And we had similar personalities. And anyway, so, um, you know, anyway, so he goes, forget that. He said, you want to work up here? I said, yeah. He goes, I've been talking to him. He said, camera, you know, these guys, my friends have been trying to get him to use me. He said, when you get up in here, don't talk to Norm. Walk in, start putting up the ring, start putting up the chairs, talk to Norm after the show. He said, don't talk to him. Don't ask him if he needs help. Just go do it. And just go, go ahead. So boom. So I went there and, you know, I was, young in the business so you know that was great advice and i did that i just walked right in helped out whoever was helping with stuff i think sensation all those guys were young at the time doing that stuff you know and and boom we put it all up may have been the gambinos may have been under ring crew at the time you know all those guys probably around 2000 late 2003 early 2004 and uh boom i did that talked to norm after the show he took my tape and he kind of blew me off, but he at least introduced himself and we talked again and he took my tape. And then I came to the next show and it was at the CCAC. And what made me so mad was I loved that freaking building. The crowds were amazing. Remember some great matches, you know, Hemrick and uh, Tracy against McChesney and, uh, and Jimmy Jacobs and just mm-hmm. some, some great stuff in that building. And of course, when I started with IWC, it was <laughs> my first show. It was the last show there. I never actually got to wrestle there. I just did an angle there and never got to wrestle in that freaking building because IWC never went back there. But anyways, went back to the next show. Norm this time talked to me a little bit and said, hey, I'll come up. I'm, I've got some ideas. Keep coming up with Tracy and I'm going to start using you. But I can't tell you exactly when. And it just so happened that the next month was the Big Butler Fair. I went up there and, you know, people no-showed or whatever. And he goes, hey, you're working Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Welcome to IWC. And then boom. (laughs) But then he told me later that had I not, he said, dude, I had everybody knocking at my door. Every indie wrestler wanted to work. You know, I'm getting tapes from everywhere. He said, had you not come in the first time and did what you did and then came back the second time and talked to me after the show. You didn't try to talk to me before the show when I was busy. You didn't keep jumping up and trying to get my attention. You did it the right way. But he said, if you hadn't done all that, I probably would have never talked to you. But because you did that, I watched your tape and then your tape was good. And I had these guys saying I should use you. And I said, okay, I'm going to give the kid a shot. And then I got in, but I mean, that's, how it happened. And I tell guys all the time, you know, it's not an insult to go put up somebody's ring, man. It's paying your dues. And you would be amazed 
at the things that people notice. They go, hey, man, and walking in and just helping out, not walking up to somebody and saying, hey, what can I do? Because then they'll say, hey, don't worry about it. We got it. Just hang out and watch the show. Just go do it. And then talk to the guy later. And so that was how I got in. The Big Butler Fair, 2004. And, uh, and that was off and running from there. That was a, that was a big that one. Was a, uh, there's a lot of people that were on that card. Um, that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. I was that great way with, uh, with Candido and Punk and Smothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those awesome are match. Shirley Doe and them fought all up in the stands and everything. I remember that show. Mick Foley <laughs> was the ref. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed a pattern here because uh, last time when you were on, I think we had just had Ray Rowe one day before you, and uh, then it's happened again. We had him on actually last month leading into Super Indie. I don't know how this happens. <laughs> but <laughs> Hey, man, you know, we, we, we just, you know, I don't know, man. We run in similar circles, I guess. You got good taste. I don't know. You think of one, you think of the other. But uh, I'll tell you what, if it was up to Norm Connors and Shirley Doe, you'd be calling us the Rock and Row Express. <laughs> I like that. Wow. Wow. No, no, you don't like that. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 trust me. Cleveland geniuses came up with for me and Ray Rowe. They wanted to call us the Rock and Row Express. And uh, somehow, and I get it, because the Cleveland Mafia, and I have to thank the Gambinos, because they did it step on the toes of their gimmick. Even though it wasn't, we weren't doing any kind of Mafia gimmick, it was just the name, and there was a mm-hmm. real-life Cleveland Mafia years ago, so... That was what it was, but they let us use it, and then Norm said okay, but that was why they didn't want to go right. with it. But they did go with it. Otherwise, we would have been Ricky and Robert, man, except mm-hmm. not. <laughs> because remember, for those who don't know, the Gambino brothers, longtime tag team, uh, Marshall Still Wrestling. Actually, they just did a reunion thing, I think, up at uh, Five Star Wrestling uh, north of the city here. Um, or were they, were they, were they, were they the Gambino's moving company? Was they what they really originally were? They became the Gambino brothers. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that, so they they came out and like dressed as movers basically, and of course had that kind of like wise guy you know kind of mafia kind of feel. Um, so that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so as I say you you you've, you've you've been around a bunch of places. I I didn't even realize just kind of pulling up some videos here for for the video version of the show here. Um, I didn't realize that uh, you you popped up even in uh, TNA for a moment there. Oh yeah, I had a third dozen dozen matches in tna nice. and uh you know on explosion and stuff like that mcchesney and i were going down there every other month for two years two mm-hmm. and a half years awesome so awesome nice. yeah. so 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 what are what are some other highlights um again like i said i mostly know your pittsburgh stuff to be you know perfectly honest um but but you've been around a bit what are some other highlights uh that that, that i may not have come across here with you i don't know man i mean i'm not <laughs> And um, I've wrestled all over the place. I've been very fortunate. And uh, I'll tell you what, I realize that more now after going away and coming back, just how fortunate I was the, the mm-hmm. first time around and uh, uh, definitely enjoying it even more the second time. But I mean, you know, I, every indie place out there. I mean, I'll tell you what, my WC run was one of my, obviously one of my favorite places to work. And uh, I have an incredible soft spot in my heart for them. Um, but I mean, Indies all over. I mean, stuff that exists, stuff that doesn't exist, you know, all the stuff that was hot at the time, trying to work for IWA Wilds uh, or Mid-South and NWA Wildside and all those, you know, NBC Alphabet Soup promotions that have popped up over the years and Mm -hmm. all of that stuff. But, I mean, lots of stuff. I mean, whether, I really, one of the things I'm most proud of, period, is the guys that I've been able to help. And that's, that's the truth. One of my absolute favorite things in the business is training or teaching or anything, whether it's training a guy who comes to the gym from scratch or some indie guy who says, Hey, I just start jumping in your car and, and talking and learning and all that, or to who, whoever I'm working with. That was one of the things that Norm Connors has said many times about uh, my time, all those years in the IWC. If you look, everybody that was coming up from the training school, all the young guys cut their teeth through me. If you look through the matches, you'll see that some of their first matches that were not against each other had me involved there one way or the other because he knew that I had a very good knack for working with young guys and being able to help them get through their, their early matches and stuff like that. And it was great, man. I got to work with all those guys, Jimmy and Marshall and Mickey and, and Shima and Gore, all those guys coming up and coming through and more, you know, whatever. But teaching guys, man, is just one of my favorite things. So I look at all the guys that I've helped, whether it's formally or informally, man, you know, 
I'll name drop again. Seeing Hunter on TV with that world title is just freaking surreal, man, because Mm -hmm. I can tell you about the day he walked into my gym and said, will you help me live my dream, man? And I said, hell yeah, brother. And we were off and running. And, uh, you know, McChesney and Shane Taylor, watching Shane Taylor just destroy Texas like he's doing right now. You know, that's another one that I that I trained. And I mean, watching those guys, man, that is that is even cooler than anything that happens with me because it, I don't know, man, if you've got kids and I have kids too, so I love, you know, parenting, but if you've got kids or students or if you're in anything like that, then you know what I'm talking about. There's nothing more rewarding than helping somebody watching them go out and do it themselves and just feeling proud watching them, man. And I mean, I feel so proud watching the Chesney watching Shane Taylor. I'm telling you, if you guys don't know what Shane Taylor is doing, you're missing <laughs> out because that was one place that Chuck and Norm and I disagreed. Those guys did not see in Shane Taylor what was there in right. Shane Taylor. They kept wanting to use him as the bodyguard and, right. and, and Ray kept trying to force him in and it just, whatever politics and all that stuff. And, and then he started working other places, but and Shane did it the right way. He said, hey, if you don't see something in me, I'm going to go somewhere else and I'm going to make them see something in me. And then right. you're going to see something. And guess what? Before he left PA, they were booking him again in IWC. Chuck right. realized Shane Taylor has got it going on. So that was kind of vindication for Shane right before he left and went down there to Texas. And mm-hmm. then it's just been off and running because he's been able to just do wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. But anyways, that is like one of the, the most fulfilling things to me. And one of my favorite things, period, is doing that. And then being able to, you know, work with some of the guys that I have and do, I mean, shoot, man, that run with Ray Rowe. Ray Rowe is one of my best. And I've made all of my best friends in life through wrestling. And I mean, it's a handful of people, whether it's Tracy Smothers, and Ray Rowe, and John McChesney. I mean, I don't want to just leave people out. There's tons of guys. But I mean, the relationship, that stuff is all just as good as everything else, man. And, and, then, uh, and then to be able to leave it and come back, man, it's even better now, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so you said you came back. And, uh, you left for a while and you came back. Um, I, anything you can speak to of the, of the motivations there? Oh, God, yeah. You know, I didn't <laughs> want, first off, I didn't want to leave. It wasn't necessarily an active choice it was the force of many things and i'll be the first to admit that i'm not going to act like i was uh you know the grinch by the time i left wrestling but man i was definitely reaching that point where i didn't care too much for indie wrestling anymore man because i had been doing it for 10 11 years or however long it was at that point and you know i mean hey you know things start to wear out anyway so I was already reaching that point where I was getting frustrated. And the difference is, is that now in my life, like I realize that you, you just work harder and you work through that and you bust through that, you know, in the wrestling business, I, I can give you a good piece of advice that I've heard from some very, uh, very wise people over the years, but wrestlers, good wrestlers that don't make it. It's not because they didn't get discovered. It's not because they didn't get their opportunity. It's because they quit before they did. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It that's usually why the good ones that don't make it don't make it because they quit before that time came for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not to make excuses because it doesn't matter what was happening in my real life. Had I worked a little bit harder, pushed a little bit harder, who knows what would have happened, but you know, conflicting forces you know i basically i started the radio thing and and really that was an accident i was supposed to be going to school for tv i said i want to learn how to do video editing so i can do some production work in wrestling and this way later on when i can't wrestle i can do that stuff and maybe i can get in the office somewhere doing video work or whatever and instead i fell in love with radio while i was at school and next thing you know I got a job right off the bat at a radio station. And at first it was nothing. It was part-time and wrestling was great. They loved that I did wrestling at that time because I was just a a part-time board operator. But then I ended up getting put on as on-air talent. And all of a sudden everything changed. And the first time, (laughs) the first time I came to work as the news anchor, uh, it was less than two weeks into being a full-time news anchor. I had two wrestling shows over the weekend. And if you know me, I talk a little bit and I was forced by the time I came to work on Monday and I'm trying to do the news and they were not happy at how awful it sounded. And I literally almost lost my job and was told wrestling cannot happen anymore. Now my boss, my direct boss was really cool. And he let me do the occasional 
small show that was so small nobody would know it happened because uh, <laughs> he knew that I had to do something. But hey, seriously, they were very much. I had a talent contract at the time, and uh, just like you would in wrestling, man, they they were very much. And it was a Christian conservative radio station. You know what I mean? They didn't mm-hmm. get pro wrestling at all, so they had no appreciation for that at all. So, anyways. That was part of it. And then I got banged up a little bit, too, in early 2011. And you put those things together, and you've got, you know, every relative that you've got saying, when are you going to stop doing that silly wrestling? Stop chasing that dream. When are you going to, you know, the radio station's doing this and that, and then, you know what I mean? And, hey, again, life works out the way it does. Had I wanted it more, I probably, you know, would have pushed in the other direction. And, of course, now I'm going, damn it, I made the wrong choice. I gave up. 31, 32, 33, 34. You know what I mean? Like, damn it, what was I thinking? But (laughs) at the time, how are you supposed to do? You know, that's the way life goes. And I thought I was done wrestling. And then, boom, all of a sudden, I part ways with my radio station, but I, I was allowed to take my radio show with me. So all of a sudden, I was my own boss and I had my own business going. And it took me about a year to realize it. And then one day I said, wait a minute. Why am I not wrestling? And it's because I was 315 pounds and I looked like a freaking grape and there was no reason for me to, I had to get back in shape. I, I had, I said, if I'm coming back to wrestling, I'm not coming back to be good as I was before. I'm coming back to be better or I'm not coming back at all. And brother, you'll see this Saturday when I come back to Pittsburgh for the first time in a while. If you have not seen me for, I'm telling you, I'm superstar Billy Graham coming out of the desert with the snakes and the spiders. And <laughs> look at the, look at the traps, look at the delts, look at the biceps, brother. It's looking good. It's feeling good. No, seriously though. I have been, I mean, I'm seven days a week training like never before. And I am, in, I'm in better shape than I ever was at whatever the best shape is you saw me wrestling. I put that in the dirt in what I'm in right now. And Mm -hmm. I'm still pumping harder than that, man. I'm telling you, I like leaving for a while, coming back gives you a whole fresh perspective. And then, like I said, you don't come back after going away just to do something again. You're either going to do it better than you did before, or you got no business coming back and doing it again. I sit Mm -hmm. here, brother, I'm 36 years old. I am in the best shape of my life, and I have got a whole hell of a lot of wrestling left to go, man. We were actually looking at, uh, while you're talking about that, we, we brought up your Tough Enough video, uh, showing a little bit of your training and the shape you're in right now. Um, that seemed like some pretty good timing uh, that, for that you. That was months ago. That was, that was months, months ago. ago. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, I, I'm losing like seven pounds a day. No, oh, I'm geez. joking. But every time I show up at the show, people go, dude, where's the other half of you at, man? I'm telling you, bro, if you have not seen me since, let's see, last time I was in Pittsburgh was... Well, it wasn't Pittsburgh, but it was that uh, retro show that they did uh, back, what was that, October that they did that, uh, where I wrestled uh, Dravito, which was, a, uh, he's a good little dude. I'd love to wrestle him again. Um, I think that was back in October. I hadn't even started. I mean, I had been training, but I was like three months in. I was down from 315. At that point, I was down to like 275, but that was still 50 pounds from where I'm at now and not just pounds, but lean, vascular, all of that brother. You ain't seen nothing. You're going to be like, damn, J-Rock, are you sure you're okay, man? Yeah, brother. I'm <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, uh, what are you watching these days? Are, are you, are you, what do you, what, what's kind of caught your eye uh, uh, as far as uh, wrestling goes? Man, I'll tell you what, I did not watch a ton of wrestling during the time that, you know what? Tracy Smothers. And you guys know this, if you've been oh, Tracy yeah. fans, long time you know that he's disappeared from time to time for a little bit every wrestler that's been doing it for 20 30 years goes through burnout about every 10 years or so and they've just got to get away and they're done and then they come back and they get bit again and they're back and then they're done and jt lightning always told me that too he goes you'll burn out one day you'll see what and i did he knew what i I, he knew it would happen eventually i didn't understand that i'm like not me I eat, sleep, and breathe wrestling, man. I'll never burn out, bro. Yeah. Well, a few years later, I was like, nah, man. Nah, this this stinks. That stinks. This ain't right. That ain't right. You know how you get after a while. So, anyways, and you had to you had to, you have to go away and you have to come back fresh again. But uh, uh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Anyways, Tracy. Tracy always told me. My point of the story was Tracy always told me that you, when you leave. You have to cut it off. And if you talk to people, 
they'll tell you right now that they're still, I'm coming out of the woodwork to a lot of people. I wasn't on Facebook. I wasn't on Twitter. The sports fix, my radio show was on, but me, I didn't have any personal social media. Nobody, no, basically from May of 2011 until March of 2015, very few people in the wrestling business saw me or heard from me except for the people that were actually close to me outside of wrestling. So when I started popping back up, you know, people are, you know, you get back in touch with everything and all of that, but that was part of it because when you're trying to stay away from something, when you're, it's not like I wanted to quit wrestling, but I had to, and I had to at least cut it back significantly. So like, and then as I'm putting on weight in the radio station and stuff, then it becomes easier to stay away because you don't want people to see you looking like that, you know? So then it's easy to not want to go wrestle. But part of it is cutting people off and just cutting the business off, not following shows or anything. So I didn't follow a lot of stuff. And, and uh, but man, now I do, you know, because I'm doing an hour of cardio a day on top of all the rest of my workout stuff. So usually that hour on the elliptical, it's straight wrestling. I'll pop it up on YouTube. I've got a whole cardio playlist and I just go find stuff and add it to it. And I'm just, just watching stuff all the time. But I, you know, obviously NXT love watching NXT. I think that's just a, a hot little show, you know, and, and just the way it's put on, because what's so awesome is everybody acts like it's new. Like they say, what's old is new again. That's just the old <laughs> school pro wrestling show with some fancy graphics and some updated move sets. But that's old school pro wrestling right there with squash matches and build up to the main events and all that stuff. And, and they're a little, you know, it's, the crowd, it's funny because it's just like the ECW arena, same crowd, every show, always doing the same stuff. But then you, you hypnotize the fans like Paulie did, and then they take it out on the road and they do the chants and stuff. So there's tons of energy there. I like watching that. I like watching Lucha Underground because it's unique the way it's shot and stuff like that. I'm not the biggest fan of that style because I just think Lucha misses a lot of stuff, and, you know, moves and stuff. But whatever. Stuff is it's a different thing. And I don't like some of those guys that I think are spotty without a purpose. Like if you're, it's one thing to be spotty and know how to use it and put it in different places like AJ styles. And then there's, you know, guys that just do spots because that's what they do. And, and I get it. That's what some people do, but, but I love the production of Lucha Underground. I think it's just like a totally different looking show because it's not a wrestling show. It's made for a, a television channel and it's made by a, a, a reality TV show guy. So, you know, you got that love watching some new Japan stuff. You know, I've got, a, I'm not going to, I, I got a bootleg subscription to the uh, to the New Japan World, and uh, <laughs> thank you very much, my friend. And anyways, uh, uh, I like to check that out. Obviously, you know, Wrestle Kingdom with, with Jim Ross and Stryker doing the commentary was pretty good because then you could watch it and get the American commentary. But I mean, wrestling in general, I don't want to say it's hot because I think that's a fallacy that wrestling is hot because business is not up for TNA or Ring of Honor or any of these places, and so. But wrestling among wrestling fans is hot again. Like, all of a sudden, this fan fan base is energized by what they're seeing. So it makes going to these shows better. It makes watching these shows better. So wrestling has a feeling of being hot, even though I, I will disagree that the business itself is hot because the money is not showing it. But the fan base, for some reason, is, is definitely more motivated and, and better. So wrestling itself, the in-ring stuff, is definitely at a pretty high level. But, I mean, I love all those shows. How about you guys? I mean, I like to watch a little <laughs> bit of everything. Oh, we're definitely... We, 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 we've gotten to the point where we split out, though we have, like, a show recap for everything that comes on Wednesday night between Lucha, Ring of Honor, and uh, and even Impact. Even that, all of them. Wednesday uh, night. Everything. You know, they it, all out there. And Chikara just announced that they're going to do a Wednesday night show on YouTube. So, just it's getting ridiculous out there. And between that and, and seeing uh, uh, myself, I just like I said I was up for AIW, my first ever in person AIW show uh, a couple weeks ago, and seeing how hot that, literally hot actually, that room was. And, uh, and, 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 and these baseball field shows that seem to be drawing pretty okay for the most part um, up there in Niles, Ohio, for instance. Uh, it, it's. It, it, it's, it's it's really nice. It's a really nice time to be a wrestling fan, I think, as a as a watcher. But yeah, you're right. It, it doesn't seem like the numbers are there. It's just we're all celebrating, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, I think the the potential's there. I do think that potential is there for a boom in the business for mm -hmm. sure. Like because you got the right pieces in place. You know, I think obviously you got to get more characters that connect you know, with the, with the audience, it's not right. just, it's got nothing to do with if it's, if it was about moves, then, you know, a lot of these guys that you see on the Indies would be, would be, you know, in bigger places. Like there's a reason that people don't connect 
because it's not about that. People don't pay to see five-star matches. They'll pay to see somebody they hate wrestle somebody they love in a five-star match. Now, that's a little bit different, but mm-hmm. they don't they don't buy it for the hype of, hey, this is going to be a great wrestling match. And that does not demean wrestling because, you know, obviously, the in-ring part of it carries it. But the people, you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. If you know how business works you understand that one one without the other is independent. So that's why I say guys that are too spotty. Like I was at a show the other day and these guys had this tag team match. I don't even remember who it is. It doesn't matter. I'm, it was just it, uh, four indie guys had a great, hardworking tag team match, but they worked way too hard. Like mm-hmm. they were just doing stuff in the wrong places and like during their heat they did stuff that was bigger than the stuff they did later and i'm like well that's why people didn't react because you did this here and that there all the stuff they did was great and if they had somebody like an agent in the back like you would have if you worked at you know wwe or something or whatever and where they could move that stuff around and a guy like william regal could go move this here move that there get rid of that do this less is more boom and then these you make these guys look awesome that's what i used to love about doing those four ways. And those were Norm's favorite things to stick me in because I would have the structure and he knew that he could give me 12 guys that need to get stuff in and we could put this thing together and everybody says what they want to do and then I ask them. They'll tell you. I sit there and go, boom, we'll move this here, we'll move that there, you do this, you do that, boom, 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 you throw him on top of all of us, dog and pony show, everybody goes home <laughs> happy. You know? and, and boom, we would go out there and, and do it. And some of those matches were just so fun, man. But, but that's it. It's just knowing then taking the guys that know how to do the stuff and then having somebody that knows when to do it. But that's when you have those mm-hmm. awesome matches. You know, it's not always when you put two high spot guys in the ring together. It's when you put one in the ring with somebody else who's the base for him that knows how to make that guy look like the superstar that he should be. That's why I've always said one guy that I wish I had been able to work, not just a match, but a program with was M dog because mm-hmm. I worked matches with him, but never anything where you're invested. And I never got to book a promotion that had TV with M dog because to me, not, not so much anymore because there's more guys that do what he does now. But when he started out with JT and Cleveland all pro, there were not a lot of guys that physically did what he could physically do. And I thought you could just market him as a human freaking highlight reel and do like Paulie used to do, just show off, the stuff that he does right, hide the fact that he can't chain wrestle and can't do all this other stuff, and you can make a superstar out of this kid, man. That mm-hmm. was one that I always wished I could work with, whether it was in the office or whether it was in the ring, because I just thought he nobody's ever taken advantage. And now he's still great, but there's a lot of guys that, that do all that. You know right. what I mean? That right. do that at level of athletics, whereas he was really cutting edge for his time when he was coming up in, like, what was it, 2000 or whenever that was that he was coming up. Right, right, exactly. At least he's getting his due a little bit here in Lucha Underground, and uh, and uh, good, good, to, good to see that. Um, you, you, you talk about <laughs> that he doesn't talk for himself. Don't I you know. Guys dig that, you know. Like I, I, I kind of <laughs> like the voice thing. We always rib him, like, "Hey, who does your voice?" You know. Like, yeah, yeah. But I always thought that was cool when Funaki did it. So I don't right, know. I right. mean, that's the one thing that M Dog does need is, is like something like a personality, a, not another personality, not that he could see, he has one backstage mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that doesn't come out when he's in front of the people as much. But I like that because then you put a, a character to his move and Lucha Underground's given him a decent, that's the first place that's given him something decent, you know? But I mean, you talked about my tough enough video, really, to be honest with you, that video was really just my sales pitch that I was back period in the wrestling business. I dressed it up as tough enough because I figure, hell, it's like scratching off a a quarter of a million dollar lottery ticket. But (laughs) that was mostly a promo and it worked. It was seen by 15,000 people on all the different places that it was on to show fans. I'll tell you what, I added tons. I maxed out my friends list, had to clear it out and maxed it out again uh, of people that found me because of that. It really helped me get my wrestling started again, but that tough enough thing is a joke, man. I mean, just mm-hmm. like I said, let's you know, Hunter, Hunter, you know, and, and M dog, they, they can't find spots for these creatives. Got nothing for these guys. And, and, you know, <laughs> and look at the clown shows that they put through. I was, I swear I watched last night after, was it last night after it went off the air. Yeah. They yeah. showed the replay after it all went off the air. And that was the first actual part of the show that I watched. And I said, man, this show is 
this show is not good. The no show, wonder it's not the show is crap, ratings. and the and the people they picked, I feel like they pe- pick these people to lose. Like the only one with any kind of personality is Easy, and I don't know how he's going to carry in a wrestling ring. You know, I mean, get them all. I'll tell you what. To me, I would take uh, what's his name, Patrick Clark, before most of the rest of them. Oh yeah, because at least oh yeah. He's got passion, you know. Oh yeah. Like, he doesn't mind telling you about it either. He thinks he's, you know, nobody else knows about wrestling, but he's got passion at least for the business. But all those, all those people, none of them are going to make it. I mean, the dude with the mohawk, and I don't even know their names. The big muscled up dude. Okay, great. If he was on the Indies, he would stand out. I don't know right. how much he's going to stand out there, but big, big guys are a dime a dozen in the mm-hmm. WWE. I mean, even if you get over for a couple of weeks because you squash a guy, like Ryback at first, like Ryback now is better. Ryback at first was you know, squash them and, and be done with it. If you do that, you'll get over until they stop the push and then you'll be done. Because I don't think any of these people are probably going to make it. But, I mean, look at the, the talent evaluation. I mean, look at this one. Hey, guys like Brian Bowers, uh, um, uh, Cassidy Stone, the kids from up your way, uh, uh, some of these other guys that had their videos on there. I would went with many of these guys, but they wanted nothing to do with indie wrestlers or any of that. And I think indie wrestler was probably the kiss of death for most people for this thing because they wanted what they've got, which is this this little, I don't know, big brother meets real world <laughs> with a wrestling ring. I don't know, man. And Billy Gunn acting like badass, you know. He's, come on, man. Everybody that coaches that show turns into Taz. What the hell is going on? <laughs> All of a sudden, Billy Gunn's in this girl's face. I put my life in your hands. You either get it or you get out of my ring. And I'm like, come on, Billy Gunn, man. Uh, like, yeah, really? Really, like, yeah, yeah. It, it, I, it, it's, it, it's so tough. You gotta, gotta be tough, but they're phony <laughs> TV tough. And then the panel, the panel's great. Paige is sitting there, you know, and I get it. She's been a wrestler her whole life, but you know, just, and Hogan, they're all getting over their own thing on the panel and watching this thing. And they're trying to mix up a recorded show with a live show. And it just doesn't, mm-hmm. I don't know. Just, it, it just doesn't work for me, it, man. It, but it, they don't want to evaluate talent. Come on. They let Michael Hutter go become the <laughs> crown jewel of TNA, man. <laughs> Who may be, in some some's opinion, maybe single-handedly carrying TNA at this point. So <laughs> I think that says a lot. <laughs> That match with Kurt Angle was the first thing I had watched in a while. I usually only watch Hutter stuff because, no offense, if you're listening, don't fire Michael Hutter for this, but the show sucks, and it sucked for so long that it can't be fixed. But Although, I thought, I watched that whole show the night Mike won the belt, and I said, man, that was a hell of a show. It was a good uh, 30-minute match with the tag team match, and the, the main event was awesome, and Kurt Angle, boom, one, two, three, in the middle of the ring with a wrestling move, and I said, boy, now this could be a new day. And then the ratings come out, and they were worse than they were the week before. And right. it just proved right there that it doesn't matter how much TNA even tries to be better. They're dead in the water, and there's nothing they can do about it. And it sucks because now they're actually trying to fix it, but I think it, it's just too little too late. But, man, he is, he is the best thing that that place has got, man. And the good thing is is that he will definitely – survive beyond that and i hate it all these guys that go man i hope tna goes out of business you're idiots because the very <laughs> jobs for us as it is you want to knock out another 30 jobs they may not get paid but it's still a job and it's still on tv you know mm-hmm. i mean i get it the checks don't always clear but you know what they didn't clear an ecw either and you guys are still <laughs> chan ecw 15 years later i don't think they'll be chan tna 15 years and, later. and, and vince yeah. is still making money off the name so uh there you go his investment you know? back then worked in well you so know? I was joking with somebody. I said, if, if Vince got the w, WCW library for like $2 million and some ads, and he got the, the ECW library for like, I don't know, a $1 million or something, what is TNA's library worth? 57 cents and a cup of coffee, man? <laughs> like, just saying in comparison to those vaunted tape libraries is what I'm saying. TNA's right. got a great library, right. but... You know, you know, so because you know, my son was asking me, you think WWE would buy it? I'm like, for what? Like, for what? They've got a better company in their developmental system. And right. that's a shame. Right. But that'll show. TNA should be what NXT is. Right. Exactly. Uh, hell, Ring of Honor should be to a certain point. Well, both of them. And if they were, there'd be more jobs and more places mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll never forget that night, brothers. March, whatever it was, 2001, sitting on my couch with my brother and some friends and going, hey, this is like when Pepsi would buy a Coke or something like that. This is the most biggest, awesome thing ever. 
and because you're stupid. I was three years in the wrestling business, and I didn't realize that I literally watched 150 jobs just disappear from the wrestling business, never mm-hmm. to be seen again. Yeah, yeah. So this is the point where I usually ask what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling, but I think you have answered all those questions already. <laughs> I, talk, I, I do talking for a living. I do two hours of talk radio a day for a living, so I've occasionally grabbed the microphone at a wrestling show and said a word or two otherwise. So um, sorry if I took over your No, it's no show. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no problem. You were a break after I just did four hours of podcasting, so this is fine. <laughs> this is absolutely fine. Um, I, it's... What? I can't wait, man, to get up to Pittsburgh. Seriously, I am back up there this this weekend, and it is mm-hmm. the first time even in the area since that show for IWC. And if you don't count that, the last time I was there was the day I threw the fireball at Ray Rowe years ago when I was uh, when I showed up for one night only. Like Sabu, lights went out. J Rock threw the fireball. Yep. Um, I don't even remember how long ago that was, but it was when McChesney and Ray were wrestling each other. So it's been a long time. I can't wait to get up there. I have no idea. I hear that this Alta Bar place is cool, and I'm wrestling a guy. You guys tell me about this guy, Jack Pollock. I hear he's a oh, Pittsburgh guy. Oh yes, out. Bowers tells me good things about him, but I'm I, I'm I'm excited. I like working guys for the first time, so mm-hmm. I've got Jack Pollock here coming to Pittsburgh. Man, what do I got in store for me? You got um he he's he, I know he doesn't like look at like he's just kind of this ginger long beard hippie looking guy for the most part. Uh, but no, he, he's great in the ring. He's very entertaining. Um, he, he he's fun on the mic. I think uh, I think you're gonna have a good time with this guy. I've seen a couple things, and mm-hmm. I, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. And I've already had a couple people go, hey, man, you and Jack Pollock has a chance to steal this show. And I said, all right, man, well, that's cool because I'm ready to go do it. But I, I love getting a chance to do, you know, that's cool because sometimes you get stuck in that rut. Uh, luckily, I've never really done it. But, you know, yeah, sometimes, sometimes guys have only wrestled the same people their whole lives. Like, right. or you do it a lot, you're always wrestling the same people. I love getting out of that, man. And, and this is part of coming back is that, I get to team up with my friends every once in a while. Like I've got a little reunion of the Cleveland Mafia coming up, and I've got a match nice. with EC3 coming up. So that's fun. I just did a thing with McChesney, but I get to wrestle guys like Brian Bowers and guys like Jack Pollock here coming up, and thing that that's cool to me because those guys didn't exist four years ago. And so there's like a whole crop of these young guys that I can get out there and and see if I can make them give it up one time. Awesome. And that's with um, the American Revolution Wrestling. Uh, you're going to be a part of this here in Pittsburgh against Alder Bar this yep. Saturday. Yeah, main event is the Greek god Papa Don against Pittsburgh's own franchise, Shane Douglas. And nice. Papa Don, I don't know if you guys know him, but Papa Don is very good. And he's new to the area as far as he's not a regular up there. So I think that'll be really good. And well, Marty, Marty Bell's on the show. Uh, she's wrestling. I think Solo Diamond is the name of her opponent, and I know a lot of Pittsburgh guys. Uh, Generation Dead's on the show. I couldn't tell you which combination, but they're mm-hmm. on the show. Purple Rain's on the show. Uh, Brian Bowers, Jack Pollock. Brian Bowers is wrestling uh, Bobby Beverly from here in Ohio. Uh, that should be a good one. So that'll be a lot of fun. I'll tell you what, ARW's got some big shows coming up at the end of the month. Like mm-hmm. They've got Pittsburgh Saturday, but five days later... Starting on the 31st, they got a three-day tour here. They've got Bret Hart coming in, Vader, uh, Lita, Rhino, Ray Rose in for the weekend, uh, Shane Douglas. Matter of fact, I'm wrestling Shane Douglas in Chicago, which I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that because, A, nice. I've never wrestled in Chicago before, uh, not even before, and uh, so it's a, a new place to go. And it's cool. It's at that Odium Expo Center where ECW ran the pay-per-view before, and uh, big ECW town, and Shane's a big you know ECW legend, and plus... All these years, I wrestled for Shane Douglas at the at the Hardcore Homecoming, and I've been like in stuff with him, but never against each other. So I'm like totally stoked. Very rare. I've been doing this 16 years, so it's very rare that I get to wrestle somebody that's done it longer than I have. So I'm like totally stoked to just like listen to Shane tell me what to do instead of usually you know the other way around. And I'm looking forward to that. And like I said, the next day here in Cleveland, Ray and I, one night reunion of the Cleveland Mafia. Hanson is loaning out the war machine to me. So <laughs> that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm working with the FBI, Tracy and Guido, on Sunday in Dayton. And then I'm coming back to you guys area. I think uh they're doing an eye pay per view, I think right off of the ARW site. But I'm getting reunited with my old friend Jake the Snake Robert. Oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's the that's the last yeah. time you were on, wasn't it? Wait, 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 actually, I think there's two times you were on because the one time you came on, yeah. was, 
your incident with Jake Roberts, where I think he was drunk in the ring, and I remember just sitting back and you just went for a half an hour, and I don't think we said a word ed- edgewise. <laughs> you know, let me tell you a story I've never told in public oh. before. It's part of my comeback. No, it's part of my comeback. Okay. I'm a part, I'm a part of the movie, The Resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts. I was called last year, early last year, by Steve Yu, he's DDP's television producer guy who does all of his little, he did the Arthur vignettes and all that stuff for DDP yoga. Steve's a great guy. Steve's a filmmaker. And he was making, they, you know, they moved Jake into the house and they moved Scott Hall into the house. Well, they were documenting the whole thing. They put big brother cameras up everywhere, documented all of that stuff. And they were making a movie and they brought in my son. Have you guys seen the, the, the words about it? Like it's been reviewed at some movie festivals and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's Stone Cold. Chris Jericho, Edge, Jim Ross, myself, uh, some other guys. There's like eight or nine talking heads that did the, uh, Jim Duggan, Mean Gene Okerlund, uh, DDP, and Scott Hall. And they did, did the talking head stuff. They brought me down to DDP's house. I spent the weekend at the mansion down there, and they uh, had me do about six hours of sit-down interview about that whole everything. And not just about that, but like about Jake and all this other stuff and all of that. And while I was there... They hooked me up as part of a thing with some DDP yoga, and I started doing that. And then I got some tips on changing my diet while I was down there. So that actually went a long way towards me completely overhauling my lifestyle. And I started doing the DDP yoga regularly. Nice. I'm a religious DDP yoga guy. If you do it, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. He doesn't pay me to say this, but I <laughs> literally feel 15 years younger because of DDP yoga. It took it fixed my knees. It fixed my hips. I mean, mm-hmm. losing a hundred pounds helps too, but it helped me lose that hundred pounds. I would not have done it without doing DDP yoga. I'm not even joking. I had no idea it was that good. And it, I can swear by it because I still do it to this day. But anyways, because of what happened with Jake years ago, and it really started to sour me on the business. That was one of the reasons that I started to have the attitude because that whole thing was stupid. And then it was dumb. I don't even want to talk about it again. Everybody's part in that was dumb. Mine, his JT, all of us, it just was stupid, whatever. And I wish it never happened. And I told them that on camera, I said, it was, if there's one night in my life that I wish I could get rid of, it was that because it was just terrible and it was disrespectful. And I really do believe in respect. And that has always bothered me. So they, they were glad to have me down there. I did that kind of cleared my conscience on that whole, not cleared my conscience, but just got that off. And, and, and so anyway, and it was cool because they showed me some of the footage, which has now become public that at the time people thought Jake was a hundred percent clean. And there was some, some footage that was contrary to that, that now people know that it's an up and down journey because he's fallen off the wagon a couple of times, but he really is a much much improved over where he was at that time that he was in Cleveland. You know, everybody stumbles a little bit, but I mean, he's lost a hundred pounds or whatever. He's back in game shape. And you can see when he talks that he's back to being the old Jake Roberts mentally that, you know, you can see that sharpness is back. So, you know, when I was asked, Hey, do you have a problem working with him? And I said, no, man. I said, as long as, the conditions that were there before don't match now. I love it because think about it. They call it his resurrection, but doggone it, that thing came full circle for me too because five years ago, it was 2010 when that happened in July of 2000, August, or excuse me, of 2010, August of 2015, five years later, we come full circle and like I'm starting over again. He's doing the whole thing again. I'm like, man, yeah. And I even got a text message from DDT's guy who said, hey, are you working with Jake in August? And I said, well, I was asked and I said, I'm totally cool with it. And he said, well, it came up at a meeting and there was some questions about it. And I said, man, no way he's got nothing to worry about. Trust me, man. Like, cause you know, I mean, there could be bad feelings from oh, yeah. what happened before, but, but yeah, it was just a funny text. And I said, man, I'm totally happy. I love it. I feel good. Let's go out here and do it. So that's going to be kind of cool. And that's it. another one of those old ECW buildings. That's that uh, Johnstown War Memorial. And then the next day, he's got Jake and Tommy Dreamer and uh, Mickey James and a bunch of other guys at the baseball stadium, Washington. That's not far from Pittsburgh, right? Washington, PA? Right. Is it? I think it's like an hour outside of Pittsburgh. Right, right. Yeah, it's about 45 minutes an hour out. Yeah. 
the, yeah, the baseball team there, or the wild things. It's right. part of that. They, right. Them, but he's got one of those brawl. He's got three of those. He's got one here in Avon outside of Cleveland. He's got the Washington brawl, brawl at the ballpark. And then he's got one in Florence, Kentucky coming up in the beginning of September. But, uh, and those are pretty fun shows. But, awesome. Uh, awesome. But anyway, yeah, man, me and Jake the Snake. What is up with that, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's come full circle. J-Rock, thank you so much. Uh, it's been an entertaining uh, show. It's been an entertaining hour. Your show, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check you out. Uh, AM, uh, amrevwrestling.com is the website to check out the shows he's on with that group. And, of course, uh, plug real quick. Your Twitter is your radio show, everything. Where can people find you all over? I'm on Twitter at, oh man, it's such a stupid, I made this thing up literally so I could find out if LeBron was going to leave the Cavs in 2010. And then I did it for four years. Like, honestly, that was why I got on Twitter. But uh, uh, it's J-Rock, J-R-O-C-C, King O. Cleave. Yes, it's retarded, man. And I can use that <laughs> word because I'm talking about myself. But uh, um, usually if you start typing in J-Rock, it'll pop up for right. you. But uh J-R-O-C-C, King O-C-L-E-V-E is my Twitter. I do the sports fix. Um, if you guys find me on Facebook there, my name, Jerry Myers, you can find my personal profile. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. You'll see me at shows and all that. I'm in PWR, uh, Erie, every month. Uh, matter of fact, I'm there Sunday. They've got a special show there. So I'm doing Pittsburgh Saturday night and staying up in PA and then just doing the show on Sunday. But PWR is a great little promotion. Too. Oh, yeah. And they... I'm telling you, they're buried in Erie. So nobody like outside of Erie gives them any, pays any attention to them, but they pack the building every month. Red hot fans. They, I'm telling you, man, uh, they have a great little thing going. We brought this up with Mike Chesney. It was on a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, I ended up at one of their shows that were uh, up in Erie for our 10 uh, year anniversary, wedding anniversary. And uh, we ended up at one of their shows just kind of impromptu. So recently or, or uh, when? This, this was a year, this was a year ago, actually. So and and also worked. Um, I, I did some some video one of their shows with uh, Billy Gunn and uh, Jerry Lynn on it. Very very good, very hot show, very fun stuff they're doing up there. Oh yeah, man. yeah, that was back in the day, man. But yeah, mm-hmm. they, you know, it's a good little place there, man. There's a lot of places out here, man. Trying hard. That's the thing. There's still garbage promotions everywhere and all that. But man. And it stinks. I wish they'd all go away, but they never <laughs> will. But you know, there's a lot of good ones out there trying hard, man. And uh, and, and there's a lot of good indie wrestling out there for people to watch. Like, that is one thing I will say. I don't know about the business, but indie wrestling fans have got a lot of good shows to watch, man, because there's a lot of good talent. And I'll say that I've been since 1998, and I can honestly say that the level of the good independent wrestlers is right. better than it's ever been. But there's so much garbage that it waters it down because there's so 90% of these people don't should not be in a locker room. But the ones that should are better than they were five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know? Awesome. Thank you, J-Rock, so much for joining us again. You can have your show back. You can have right. your show back. I want to find about five minutes to talk about how my weekend went. and uh, <laughs> go to- Just give it up one time. Give man. it up That's one time. <laughs> give it up. Thank Sorry. you so much, J-Rock. Thank check you. him out. In the meantime, go, go check out everything else going on at Sorgatron Media, and we'll be right back with a little bit of a show. I want to ask Chris if she's if you're just like breaking out and Chachi plays plugs like in the middle of the night, you know? <laughs> Sleep chatching. And she just like she just like reaches over and like I know I know I'll donate in the morning. You know, typically speaking, by the way, that was like the, my biggest fear was like if a microphone even got within like a hundred yards of me, I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. I'm hmm. gonna combust right now. Like this is the end of my life. I don't know if uh, indie wrestling shows uh, had uh, wealthy patrons who uh, earned their money selling LSD all, all up and down the West uh, Coast. That I don't was, know about in Pittsburgh, but I'm sure somewhere there is. Uh, that was that was the case for the Grateful Dead. Like, I, uh, TV. I like the hype bros. Like, I like the movie Batman and Robin. <laughs> are they a good tag team? <laughs> no. No. But are they entertaining and campy? Yes. Uh, no. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, Mojo Rally is essentially NXT's bat nipples. Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Gameathon for Youth Arts Programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Toonsium or join us live. 
ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, start! So yeah, that's what everything going on. Check out SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, so uh, <laughs> say it went long. It's J Rock. That's how he rolls. And uh, <laughs> I knew it was going to be a very uh, easy night for us on the Indie Mayhem show. But I did want to touch on it. I, I got uh, Eamon, I got a very surprise um, uh, kind of request to do a show this weekend. Um, oh yeah. And you know, uh, we've been talking a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm not taking on too many wrestling gigs other than what I, uh, my car's full, right? But uh, I had the chance to go check out Northeast Wrestling new. So when he said on the text that I was going to get a new shirt and capitalized, I thought he was just being clever. But it actually <laughs> says new on it. So I, I was I was very excited about that. This is one of those baseball shows. And we talked about I don't know if we talked on here or where or, or off. And, uh, uh, but, uh, 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 you know, the GFW just did a bunch of uh, baseball shows up in the area in Erie and Cleveland. This was in Niles, Ohio, which for me was really uh, – we talked about this a little bit on the Power Hour, so you can get a little bit of the personal side of things. But it's kind of an old stomping grounds for me. So it was really cool to go back because they have a ball field by the mall now, and this is where they did that. That sounds weird probably to most people, but that's how that went. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so it was a ball field show, uh, and, and uh, I got to do uh, the, the ringside. Actually, I got to do the entire camera setup uh, because apparently they just set up a camera that I'm running ringside, and I have to go hit record, run up there, and, and, and that's it. It was a fun show. It was absolutely a fun show. Uh, you can go check it out right now, northeastwrestling.com. Uh, the DVD is actually up for sale right now, so that's cool. Uh, I'm sitting there at ringside, and I'm like, DVD will be available Tuesday. I'm like, I'm not editing this, so okay. So <laughs> who's going to do that, I guess? So I hope I do a good job here, uh, my one-man video team. But uh, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, it, this, is, this is the card. I don't know if you looked at this thing, Eamon, yet. Uh, but we had uh, Mickey James versus Tessa Blanchard. And... Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, I'm just picking up the big stuff here. Uh, Kevin Nash and Magnus teamed up with uh, somebody called the Cam Ann Connection. Uh, did, do I know who Jack is? Donovan Jack, yeah. Uh, he works for Ring of Honor currently. I thought he was a Ring uh, of Honor guy. I am a huge fan of him after this weekend. <laughs> oh, he's fantastic, yeah. He was amazing. He's really good. He was, I mean, he, was very, he took on um, uh, Caleb Conley, uh, uh, and 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 he was you know the bad guy and stuff, but like by the time it was done, it was like he gets up on the road, he won the match, and he gets up and like the guy, everybody like I heard like guys behind me in, in the front row, and that was awesome. And he's like, <laughs> I, he's like, I know. I was like, yes, perfect. Uh, so no, I am now a a, a huge fan of uh, Dijak after that match. Uh, Jerry Lawler, Dylan Bostic, which I would say is one of the best wrestling matches. Uh, I've seen. I'll get to that in a moment. And of course, Matt Hardy yeah. against. Funny that we mentioned him. Warbeard Hanson. Nice. So ties it, ties it together. There was not a bad match. Even like the the no name people, I presume they just kind of run with the Fed on here. Were very good, uh, top to bottom. First of all, coming down the line. First, Mickey James. Um, I will mark out a little bit at this point because I uh, it was this close to uh, working a show with Mickey James. I think last year uh for meadville for the superstar show and then she had to go get pregnant with some guy named magnus um <laughs> but uh no it was really cool to, to have a chance to work with her and uh yes she touched me um no no she she, she slid out of the ring and and she you know uh, uh kind of studied studied herself on my back and everything uh but no really super awesome tessa blanchard uh really awesome to see her for the first time i don't think i've even seen a video with her uh knowingly uh, or anything, but uh, to, to talk with her a little bit, just really cool person. Uh, I'm hoping about reaching out to her about uh, maybe coming on the show because I think we'd have a lot of fun with her too. And uh, and I know you. That's somebody you've been you've been following a little bit too, right? Definitely, she's been someone that's uh, breaking out. I think a bit. Uh, obviously, name recognition wise, uh, uh, she's been working pretty much everywhere now. So uh, she she yeah she's uh, she's great. She seems to be a one one of the people that. Is on that trajectory towards uh, uh, WWE, uh, sure. it seems, because it seemed she did like like in her first couple months. I noticed she did like early work as like uh, as like a reoccurring rosebud, right? Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, she's been doing some really great stuff. So, so she's on the radar. So that's really good to see. She's at least on the radar with WWE. So hopefully we see her in like an NXT sooner or later too. So mm -hmm. um, 
aside from that, like I said, I mentioned briefly the Jerry Lawler versus Dylan Bostic. Uh, you know, Bostic comes out. Bostic is a, is a guy that I've been. Uh, I'm kind of flip floppy on. Um, like I always feel like, and this this is no. You know, I'm kind of figuring. That. I'm a fan of Dylan. I, I, I first that that's out there. Um, <laughs> but it always feels like his entrance is flat to me. You know what I mean? And uh, he came out, did this thing. Uh, Jerry got in the ring, and they both got on the mic. Of course, and you know they put over the whole. He's the Justin Bieber, or he's friends with Justin Bieber. I love him yelling, "Justin Bieber is my friend." Stop saying bad stuff about him. And, uh, <laughs> and 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 if you've never seen him and Ray Lynn come out, they always like have a too long kiss, like in the entrance or in the ring or something before the match. This became <laughs> like the crux of the entire match, right? Because uh, uh, Jerry's making fun of them, you know, doing the Jerry Lawler thing. And uh, and I, I got to say, ten times he would stop in the middle of the match, uh, uh, Dylan Bostic, and, uh, and go make out with his girl. And just the crowd was hating it more and more. It was just the greatest heat I've seen in a match for a very, very long time. Um, Jerry Lawler, guy's still going. Guy's still drop kicking, taking back drops. And every time I'm like... Damn it, Jerry! Don't have a heart attack in front of me. Um, but <laughs> but he was just absolutely tremendous and uh, really cool to work with. Once again, I've done a couple of shows with him at this point. Um, and uh, Hardy versus uh, Hanson was was amazing. Uh, nobody knew who Hanson was. I don't think they just kept you know they they, they announced him as Warbeard, but like I really I don't think anybody there knew who he was for the most part. Like you know majority wise, because I think it was very general uh, wrestling fans there, obviously for. For the stars and everything smooth show great pacing really top notch i i i, I hear things about how great, uh global force wrestling is going in these ball ball field shows first of all my biggest issue as i pull up my selfies here um but my biggest issue with global force wrestling versus this and i actually talked with i, I think it was tessa i was talking with i was like yeah global force doesn't put seats by the ringside and she's like that that's freaking weird, you know. I'm like that. That's, yeah. I'm like that's not good for you guys, right? And it's like no, no, absolutely not. And there's there's my uh, uh, self aggrandizing selfie in front of that. Yeah, all the seats out there, uh, and there's actually a couple fans already hanging out early, early uh, after the gates opened. But uh, really cool setup. And I mean, stands are never full, so you, it's always hard because you're like you're not gonna fill even these small stadiums with wrestling fans. Period. There were definitely, yeah. I mean, there were definitely fans there in that in the hundreds. I can give you a number. I, I, my guess is five, six hundred people. But you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how that that, that kind of compares. But uh, but really good, uh, really good. Uh, uh, the promoter was really awesome. And uh, um, I'm going to butcher his name this late at night when I'm recording this, so I'm not going to say it. But go check them out. NortheastWrestling.com. Um, they're doing shows all over. They're going to be in uh, Connecticut. They're going to be. I think they're mostly based out of Connecticut. It sounds like everybody came from it. Actually, they got a lot going on in Connecticut. I'm looking at their DVDs, not their events. That's the problem. And they're doing a lot of these ball field shows. Uh, Massachusetts, New York, and Fishkill. I think that that's the one that's close to uh, Mad Mike coming up here. Has has Young Bucks and Rey Mysterio on the card. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Uh, a lot of Connecticut, Williamsport, PA. Uh, so they travel around a bit. So it's really cool to see uh, that going on. Plus, you know, listen, the American Revolution is doing these ball field shows as well. That seems to be the cool thing to do. And uh, I, I'm interested to see how they're doing because they have all kinds of crazy big names on their shows too. And, and how does that compare? These are very basically spot shows, right? And I think then we talked about last week kind of your spot shows versus your storylines and what really wins out here, right? Um Really, it comes down to what makes you the money. So, and and, and and discussions I've been having with people, you know, kind of kind of pulls that towards the, you know, the the big star ball field, you know, or the Meadville superstar shows, or, or whatever the case may be. You know, uh, you can. It, it, it's such a battle, isn't it? It's like, do we do these shows, uh, dust up all these big names, and that's it, and then we don't actually build something that's mm -hmm. new but we're making money versus let's build something and make this the thing. Like you guys are doing a great job with inspire for instance, right? That you have a thing that you've made. that's not dependent on even the Ray Rose and Chris heroes coming in. Right. So yeah. You guys have a, a fan base. So very fun show. Go check it out. Um, and I, I don't know I, that that's it. That, that's one side of it. That's a whole other side of indie wrestling. It's a, it's a lot of fun. So uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to them for having me up there and my new, and my new shirt. As you see, <laughs> right there. 
<laughs> your new new shirt. But no, I, and I do have a shot for you guys on video. Let me pull that up real quick. I took a quick shot of intermission, so it's really kind of emptied out. But you get a kind of an idea of the layout here as well, so if it ever loads. So there you go. Um, but yeah, they say one of the smaller stadiums. That's cool. So with the aim and anything up you want to bring up, anything to touch on? It's it's late. We're on J Rock time. <laughs> I, I I think we I think we got it. Down. I'm worn out. I, I I'm worn out, man. Man, you, you, it's it's like this at the shows too. He wears you out. But, uh, <laughs> no, it was awesome. I, I really enjoyed talking with him. And, and why are we I still mean, here? Why why is the ring still up? What's happening? Oh, J Rock's cutting his promo. He's not done yet. <laughs> but no, he's awesome. It was good to, good to catch up with him as well. I mean, he's one of the guys. One of my one one of the guys that kind of made an impact when uh, when I was kind of getting into watching indie wrestling back in 2007 and i know he dropped the 1998 in there so <laughs> so mid-career at this point for him so that's awesome thank you so much for that amen plug something plug something uh inspire pro wrestling.com is where you can find my ventures in the uh, indie wrestling world uh i said it on the mayhem show but we just announced that our battle war show is returning uh this september uh featuring the stars of chicago pro wrestling so that's very exciting stuff, and you should be a part of that. And tickets go on sale for that this Friday around noon, so noon Central Standard Time, Ooh. so 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 1 p.m. Short Time. Uh, so yeah, definitely go uh, check that out and go uh, see what we're doing down here in Texas. Awesome. As a fan, I will be at the Gathering of the Juggalos. I'm going. I'm leaving after I finished all the podcast work. <laughs> and t- had a few hours of sleep, and I'm heading out there to Columbus, or near Columbus, actually. And there'll be Bloody Mania, there'll be Oddball Wrestling, there'll be Women's Wrestling. I got at least three nights of wrestling ahead of me here. That all starts at about 1 in the morning. So watch your Instagrams, watch your Twitters. Sorgatron is the, is the name across the board on all my social medias. You will be seeing stuff from me over the next several days, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Last week, we saw Kaiju Big Battle the first night. There's no wrestling the first night! I'm so sad! What that am I going to do? Watch music play? I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hey, hey, the first night after the wrestling, we went and saw Head P.E. and he got a fist fight in the crowd. So it kind of continued. So Kind of works. And got that on the internet, too. What's up? But uh, also, I'm kind of surviving around that and finishing up the final touches. Just got a couple of quick, quick changes uh, for the uh, Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table available for pre-order. Currently, you can save 20% over at joe-dobrowski.com. Oh, this is magical, sir. Absolutely magical. Uh, so please go check that out. Digital downloads will be available also on pittsburghwrestling.com and the upcoming indywrestling.us as well. Uh, I got to hang out for an afternoon in Virgil's living room. <laughs> living hey, the dream. There you go. <laughs> That's living the living the million dollar dream, baby. So and uh, all kinds of other stuff coming up. But we'll, 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 I'll tell you about Bloody Mania was and everything next week. Next week we are actually scheduled to have. Chris the Joseph of Lucha Underground. He's he's rubbing his hands over there, uh, and and he is scheduled actually to join us on both shows. So please tune in at 9 p.m. We're actually probably going to start with the interview with Indie Mayhem Show, and uh, he's supposed to hang out with us on Wrestling Mayhem Show for just the general wrestling talk. I can't wait. So I'm excited. I'm debating whether or not to drop any questions about Big Dick Johnson in this one. Um, I feel like it's going to be a challenge, and I think I want to take myself up to the challenge to not bring it up. But we'll see how that goes. It could be a fun drinking game. Uh, but anyways, uh, so 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 looking forward to that and, uh, next week, and it'll be uh, Lucha Underground week here. On I have a week to catch up. I'm bringing Lucha Ground with me, Lucha Underground with me, and want to watch in the hotel as I fall asleep Simon. to try to catch up. I'm up to April. Okay, I'm up to April. You'll make it. I'm You'll in. make it. We'll see. It's, I still got to watch Pro Wrestling vs. Zombies tonight so we can get back the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, oh, RWA is a show this weekend. That's the other reason. Tracy Smothers on three shows Saturday. Nice. How is this happening? He has a time splitter. He's on the the Alter, Alter, Ball, Alter Bar show down there. He's in the main event at RWA, so I'm hoping he's on the first matchup down here. And he's going to be at... The match that starts at 2 in the morning, uh, Bloody Mania, in, in, where I'm going to be at, out two and a half hours away, he's going to be in a flag-burning match with the Rude Boy. Oh, my God. He's got a busy night. It is crazy. 
he's crazy. If I run him into a, into him at the gathering and he still says, "I remember you," I'm going to be freaked out. He is a he's Tracy Smothers. That's J Rock. He's Tracy face. Smothers. What he's what Tracy Smothers. That's why I saw him, boy. You know, I want to see you still rocking the the flag after all the controversy lately. I think I'm a bigger deal, especially. Oh, you might get lynched at the gathering. Anyways, with that, thank oh, you so good. much. Why? It gets weird there. It gets weird. It, it gets real weird. Eamon, he's the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. I'm the horse voice of Sorgatron Media. Check out everything. <laughs> Please support your indie wrestling. We'll see you guys. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat for the oh. taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>